Hello, I'm Tom Trombley from the Castle Museum of Saginaw County History. And I'd like to invite you to join us to explore one of Saginaw's neighborhoods, The Grove. The Grove is a neighborhood with a very rich history. It's the area around Saginaw City Hall. And as we explore, we're going to see there's many layers of history in this neighborhood. And both recreation, residential, and civic uses are combined in this area. At first glance, it's a landscape that appears to be natural. One can almost think that they've been transported to some place in northern Michigan. However, in reality, it's a landscape that bears witness to thousands of years of human occupation. Native Americans and then later European settlers all transformed the landscape of the Grove. Originally, the area was a marshland along the banks of the river with some high ground in it. Uh, in the early 20th century, the property was acquired by Ezra Rust and transformed over a generation into a park. And what is now Ojibwe Island was originally not an island at all. It was a piece of high ground going, continuing out into the river. And as a WPA project in the mid 30s, a canal was dug and made it, making it into an island. One of Saginaw's most picturesque buildings is the Waterworks Building. However, I must say I have a little bias towards the Castle Building being the most picturesque. It's a wonderful building dedicated in 1929, and originally the water came directly from the Saginaw River. The tower is not merely a decorative uh, part of the building. It's actually designed to conceal a huge water tank that's used when the filters are backwashed. Uh, the architect was very proud of his design and it has been greatly beloved by the city since its dedication in 1929 and there is a long tradition of decorating it at Christmas time. The landscape of the Grove area is not only picturesque, it is full of cultural attractions. They include the Anderson Enrichment Center, the Children's Zoo at Celebration Square, and the Japanese Cultural Center and Tea House. The Japanese Cultural Center and Tea House was a gift from Saginaw's sister city, Tokushima, Japan. Constructed in the early 1960s with the Tea House added in the 1980s, it is an authentic and magical place. The Grove was originally platted as a residential district in the 1860s. Originally, the area had guidelines on the setback and scale of the homes that would be constructed. There are still private residences in the area, and they vary greatly in age. Everything from the late 1860s through the first part of the 20th century. This is the 1929 Montague home, which um, today functions as a bed and breakfast. Some of the vacant lots at one time held additional homes. This is kind of a scrapbook of homes that have stood in the Grove. Some of these uh, stood where the vacant lots now are located, and some of them were located where some of the homes, the later homes are now located. One of the things you'll notice in the photographs that from the beginning, even the earliest photographs show that the area was heavily shaded by mature trees. As you can see from this 1860s bird's eye view, the residential area always adjoined railroad tracks and industrial uses, as was traditional throughout Saginaw. Commerce and residential functions were always mixed. This late teens home was constructed for the William J. Weekman family. Behind the home was a garden that bordered Lake Linton. The Weekmans were not the only family to develop their backyard into a garden. The Edward Germain family also had an elaborate garden along the shore of Lake Linton. This is looking towards the Germain's garden and carriage house from Ojibwe Island. And when you look at these photographs, it's really amazing to think this is in one of Michigan's major industrial cities. 
It's really interesting when you look at historic photographs of the neighborhood. Sometimes when you compare them with current photographs, the neighborhood seems almost unchanged. This is a home constructed in the 1870s and remodeled in the early, late 19th, early 20th century, and today it houses the Mexican American Council. Hoyt Park was a gift from Jesse Hoyt, one of the developers of East Saginaw. It was given to the community in the 1880s after his death, and at the time it was given, it was a wonderful tract of land, but the problem was it was basically a swamp. And it took almost a generation of engineering and work to make it into the site it is today. After the marsh was drained, the natural depression that remained has provided a perfect place for generations of Saginaw to play baseball, toboggan, skate, and even a perfect place to meet and as demonstrated in this photograph of the Shriners, a place where people could march and gather. And in, within the past few years, a monument to Saginaw's veterans has been added to the upper portion of the park. One of the landmarks of the area is a residence constructed in the late 1860s that became a home for the aged in the early 20th century and is now again a private residence. This circa 1905 photograph shows a private residence which is now the rectory for Holy Family Catholic Church. The church originally was started in the late 19th century on the site and the current building was constructed in the teens. Originally on this site towards the northern end of the grove, there was an elegant late 19th century mansion with the most surprising and interesting neighbor. A plant for converting coal into gas used for lighting. Originally constructed in the 1860s, the plant was enlarged and altered several times and a facility remained on the site for generations. At the very northern end of the neighborhood is Saginaw City Hall, its location chosen as a result of the merger of Saginaw City in East Saginaw in 1889, which required that a new city hall be constructed halfway between the two business districts. This photograph shows the original city hall constructed in the early 1890s. That building was destroyed by fire on April 9, 1935, and this building was constructed to replace that building and still serves the community today. We hope this brief history will encourage you to go out and explore the Grove, its parks, its cultural attractions, and its history, and also to explore all of Saginaw.